Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple area. He looked around at everything and, since it was already late, went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, he was hungry, seeing from a distance a fig tree in leaf. He went over to see if he could find anything on it. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. It was not the time for figs. And he said to it in reply, May no one ever eat of your fruits again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem, and on entering the temple area, he began to drive out those selling and buying there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He did not permit anyone to carry anything through the temple area. Then he taught them, saying, it is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, but you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priests and the scribes came to hear of it and were seeking a way to put him to death, yet they feared him, because the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Early in the morning, as they were walking along, they saw the fig tree withered to its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus said to him in reply, Have faith in God. Amen, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it shall be done for him. Therefore I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it and it shall be yours. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, so that your heavenly Father may in turn forgive you your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So many teachings in this gospel. Let us begin with the subject of the fig tree, which can create some problems. Someone who is not from the Mediterranean will surely not understand this passage. Why does Jesus curse the fig tree that does not bear figs when it is not the season for figs? And what is the fault of the fig tree? But you have to know that fig trees bear, or at least some fig trees, not all, bear two types of fruit, an early fruit that appears immediately. It appears before the leaves. The fruit appear immediately and then gradually ripens as the leaves appear. This early fruit, in Spanish at least, is called breva. It is a much larger fig, dark in color, very sweet. The breva and also very fragile, very soft. The breva appears before the first leaves, and when the leaves appear, the breva has grown and can be eaten, and then, later on, a second harvest appears, which is the much smaller fig itself. Not all the rows produce brevas, but possibly this one did. What is the lesson? Double teaching. First, you have to bear fruit. This is the first teaching. You have to bear fruit. You have been given many things. Maybe not all of them. Maybe others have been given more. But how many have you been given? Of all kinds, if I think of myself, the first thing I think of is life, the grace of God, and my family. How fortunate am I? How many gifts? Then I think of the possibility of studying, the great friends who have accompanied me in life, the great teachers I have had, so many gifts. Each one of us must consider this every day. We are not owners. We have been entrusted on loan. We have been entrusted with health, money, culture, friends, children, 
They have been entrusted to us on loan, and we must make them yield to the one who has entrusted them to us. Then in this same passage of the fig tree, the Lord takes the opportunity to give another lesson. Not only this one, that we must bear fruit, but a lesson that ask and it will be given to you if you have confidence. He insists on this. If you believe that it will happen, it will happen. If you doubt, it is because you do not have enough faith. You have to believe that what you are asking for, asking, not demanding, but pleading and asking, being in grace, because otherwise you cannot ask someone with whom you are angry. If you are asking with humility, you have to believe that they will grant it to you, and perhaps this this lack of faith is a kind of just in case I ask, which prevents what you are asking for from happening. And then there is this teaching about the temple. My house is a house of prayer. You have turned it into a den of thieves, of bandits. Why? Does it bother the Lord, for example, that in the church the collection is passed? Or that in certain countries, like in the United States, there is a voluntary allowance that the faithful give weekly or monthly? Is that what bothers him? Where is the church going to get the money, for example, to pay for the electricity or to pay the expenses of the church? That is not the problem. The problem is not that there is a need for money to carry out the works of the church. The works of evangelization in the first place and social works. That is not the problem. The problem when the objective is money. When everything revolves around money. When the most important thing and sometimes the only thing is money, that is the problem. What are we doing with the church? With the parish, for example, what are we doing? Is the most important thing money or is the most important thing service? Since Francis of Assisi said, Do not ask for money. Talk about God. Evangelize and they will give you money. Do not put money in the first place. Do not make money the objective of your work. The worker deserves his livelihood. But you dedicate yourselves to what you have to dedicate yourselves to, which is to serve the Lord, to evangelize, and for love of the Lord, of course, to serve the Lord, caring for and helping the most needy. For example, by organizing charity structures in each parish, or in each diocese. And how can we know if in a parish the first thing is money or the first thing is evangelization? There is a definitive test and it never fails. In that parish, what is the place of things that do not make money? This is the test. In this parish, does money come first or does evangelization come first? All you have to do is look at the place occupied by things that do not make money. What things do not make money? For example, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Normally, no money is asked for going to adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Or for example, praying the rosary. There is no charge for having the rosary organized in the parish. It is prayed, sometimes by the priest, but sometimes by some people in the parish men or women, before or after or at any time during the Mass. But above all, there is a sacrament that does not bring money. And that is the key to whether this is an evangelizing parish or a parish that lives on money. I am referring to the sacrament of confession. Are there confessions in that parish? Is the priest available in that parish? Not half an hour a week at the most, if at all. Is the priest available in the confessional? Is he available? With a timetable, of course, is he available to the faithful so that whoever wants to go to confession without going through the successive series of impassable walls 
that are the multiple secretaries that the parish has. That doesn't give money. Money does not pass through the confessional. They do not ask you for an amount to go to confession. That is the key. A parish that lives on money is a parish where there are either no confessions or almost no confessions at all. A parish that is thinking about the good of the parishioners is a parish where at least within its possibilities, because sometimes priests have an extraordinary amount of work, especially if they run several parishes, but where within their possibilities, the priest has a timetable for confessions. And then comes the other question. Obviously, what do you do to help your parish? Because it is nice to say, in the parish, they do not have to ask for money. But where are they going to pay the bills? If everyone does as you do, for example, one dollar in the collection, if you do, how are the bills going to be paid? We have to live for God. Everyone, we all have to live for God. The priest and also the laity, we have to live for God. If we do not do so, we are not bearing the fruit that we should bear. For what we have received, and it may be that one day the Lord will say to that fig tree that does not bear fruit, you are going to dry up. Amen.